keep moving forward. Um, you're going to stumble. You're going to have a lot of highs. You're going to have a lot more lows, more than likely. And if you allow those, the same way you treat the highs, you got to treat the lows. The, the same way you embrace the highs and you're all excited about how something worked out for you, you got to do the same thing with the with the lows. And you got to make sure that you push forward no matter what. This is Fred Ricciani of TSC. We have right here on the line a very special guest. He's the founder of Trifecta Strong, an acclaimed celebrity trainer, an entrepreneur, a man who is always given back, and he is making his United States boxing debut August 20th at the legendary Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. We are talking to the incredibly multi-talented Paul Bamba. Paul, thank you so much for the time. How's everything going? Everything's going great. Really appreciate having me on. You got a big fight coming up August 20th. You've been competing for a couple of years now, making your U.S. debut. How does it feel to be just a few weeks removed from the big fight? feels really good. Uh, a little anxious because it's the first time fighting at home and first time my, my friends and family can actually come see me. But uh, I've been putting myself through the ringer, so I'm pretty sure I'm going to show out, have a, be able to do a really good job. A lot of times you learn a lot from training, from winning, but you also learn from losing. So what did you learn most from your most recent loss? You can't play boxing. You can't really uh, take time off. Um, you, you literally just got to stick to it and you have to you have to train how you're going to fight. And if you slack off, it's you're, you're in there for a little bit. So it's going to show. And it's unfortunately like sometimes you take a loss and that's what happened to me. So I've been much more focused. I don't mess around as much anymore. And um, I would just say like tunnel vision. Because those are the things that have helped me bounce back. I've been able to um, win my last few fights since then. And I've heard this from a lot of fighters, too, that, you know, whether you have a loss or even an injury or just any type of setback, really, even if it's within a fight, you have to have like short term memory. Right. So can you talk a little bit about that and how you have to just have like that that kind of rapid resilience and, and kind of like you said, the tunnel vision? You can't really let it affect you. You got to If it's something you're really, truly into, you just got to get back to it and you got to make sure that you're. I, I don't want to keep saying tunnel vision, but you just have to stick to it. You literally just, if that's the plan you set out for, stick to it. There's going to be ups and downs, peaks and valleys, if you will. And then you you just keep going. You put your best foot forward and you give it your all. And usually uh, hard work beats talent. And you have such an incredible story. And, and we'll talk about that in a second. But presently speaking, you are an entrepreneur. You are a celebrity trainer. You're somebody that teaches self-defense, particularly to women as well. Uh, you do a lot of great things. You already have a full plate. What made you say one day, you know, over the last couple of years, you know what? I want to add boxing to this already full plate. Um, I've always wanted to turn pro. I think when COVID happened, um, it allowed me the opportunity to focus a bit more on boxing. I'm I'm very good at teaching it, but it's always been like a dream to um, actually like pursue it as far as like in the professional ranks. And I, I didn't really have the, the biggest amateur career. I only had like four amateur fights. Um, so during COVID, I was able to um, speak to a promoter that had some fights going on um, from Rising Star Promotions, Thomas Lamana. And he told me that if I worked with the trainer and I was working hard, he could get me a fight, see how I do. And then we'll talk after that. Um, I had a first round knockout. I did really well. I trained really hard for it. And then I've just been learning as I go ever since. It's just um, it's a, it's it's a real passion. It's not something I need to do um for finances or anything like that. It's just something I truly like enjoy. Just <laughs> an, an incredible story overall. I mean, from the age of three, you 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 bounced around to I believe roughly you know twenty different foster homes before finding before finding a family. Uh, you you you're a former Marine. Thank you for your service, by the way. Uh, and and then you you were homeless for for a while. You know, when you got to New York City, fast forward all these years later, you're the the founder of Trifecta Strong critically acclaimed trainer, work with a number of different high profile athletes and celebrities and everything. Uh, but help me fill some of these gaps here because we always hear kind of some of these like rags to riches stories and yours is absolutely incredible. Uh, but how did you kind of maintain that belief in yourself and constantly reinvent yourself despite all the setbacks? Um, actually, there's a quote. Um, there's, I don't know exactly how it goes, but there's a, a guy in jail and a guy that's very much successful and they both asked how they ended up where they are. And I believe it said, like, my father was a drunk or something like that. My father wasn't, but um, so you just take what you will from each situation and you can either, like, use it as a crutch or you can use it to motivate you to do better and not, like, really succumb to your, your background, like, what it is. And I think every day, like, that's what helps me push myself is 
I don't ever want to go back to the lifestyle I had. And when I'm lucky enough to have kids and a family, I want to make sure that I'm giving them all the right things and the right tools and not just like monetary, but actually like self-belief and um, like mental strength, mental toughness. You, you can't really let things that happen deter you for like moving forward because you still got a life to live. From what I understand, when you arrived in New York, you, you were homeless. Fast forward all these years later, of course, you are an incredible success story. But how did that all start for you? Did you work somewhere at a gym and realize like, wow, I have a great aptitude to to teach? Did you start from scratch? Like, where, where, where did it all come from? How did that journey start to create Trifecta Strong? I lived on the 6th train. It happened to be right by a Church Street boxing gym. Um, uh, one day, I was just a member. And then one day... I taught the owner's son, who I didn't know was the owner's son at the time, how to lift weights. And the way I explained it to him, they're like, hey, do you want a job teaching boxing? And I was like, no, I, I don't know how. <laughs> and they're like, well, teach you. You can um, you explain things really well. And I was very shy at first. And then after a few classes, I was able to get it together. And my classes started selling out. And then I just I just kind of ran with it. It made me feel good. It felt good to see that confidence and others like permeate into other aspects of their life, especially if they would come up and tell me about it. So I was like, oh, this is it. Like, this is something I'm good at. And this is something I should stick to. Cause I think a lot of times when people are younger, they, they want to do a bunch of different things instead of putting their all into one thing that may or may not be their calling. And that's why they might not get as far. So I, I just literally ran with it. I figured if I'm not fighting, I'll be teaching boxing, but no matter what I'm doing, it's going to be boxing related. And, and that's going to be my thing. That's going to be like the legacy I build off of. And when did you decide to take that leap of faith and become an entrepreneur? Because that's a whole different animal. <laughs> I got fired from the same place that hired me um, at Church Street Boxing because I, I was late to um, to work one day. And then um, I thanked the owner. And then I, in my mind, as I was walking out the door, I was like, I could do this way better. And um, so I, I went back in, I shook his hand and I was like, I'm going to be a competition. And um, I was very polite about it. I got rehired back at Church Street about a week later through a third party, a celebrity trainer named Hollywood Hino. He got me back in there and then everything just took off. I, I made sure I was never late again. Um, I made sure any opportunity I could have, I, I showed up for and I, I just ran with it. I was like, I can do this. There's the only way I can't is if I don't show up and if I don't like take it seriously. So I would I'd go to other classes. If somebody did something I thought was better than me, I'd try to add it to like my my toolbox, if you will. And um, I would just build off of that. I'm like, I'm very competitive as is. So it, for me, it was kind of easy. Once you find what you like, it becomes a lot easier to like to build off of it. And and I, I like training. I, I like working out. It, it gets like frustrations out for me. But you also see like how you how it translates into other people's lives, like I said. And if you can do that, you can make some money, help some people out. Why not? When you when you had your footing, how important was it for you to give back and, and, and to give back into the universe and to really just positively impact people in a variety of ways? Um, giving back is everything. I think that when I went to New York, I learned that if you work hard, people will help you out. Like you just fall into things. No one helps out anybody that just talks about things. But in New York, it's, it's very gritty. And it's very fast paced. So if people see you're working hard and you're busting your butt, they might throw you a bone here and there. So you get good connections, you meet people. Um, and because I was homeless and stuff like that, I used to eat in soup kitchens up in Harlem and stuff. I, I like giving like I like giving food back. I like I do like a turkey giveaway every year, like little things like that. It might not be much just yet, but like steadily building off of it and and trying to pay it forward because. Um, if you're lucky enough for someone to give you a chance, you you got to pay it for it. I like I, re I really believe that. And then that energy is just returned back to you. I mean, you've talked about it, right? Somebody gave you a shot and it, it totally changed your life. And it's something that maybe seems simple for somebody else. And, you know, not much effort, but it meant the world to you. And you're kind of doing that now for somebody else, which is amazing. 100 percent. It's all about um, giving back. And it, it sounds silly, especially when you're a little younger. I think most people are a bit more um, into themselves and making sure they're good. But as like stuff starts to roll out, you realize that that's the way the world works. It's like, it takes a village to, to raise a kid. Same thing. It did like it takes a village to build and to grow off of. And, and for that thing, things like that to work better for you. What are some of your long-term goals? Do you, do you want to continue just 
to grow this business? Do you see yourself maybe getting involved with with Hollywood and working with stunts and fight scenes, things like that? What 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 do you see for yourself? I know it sounds like a silly question, like we're in college <laughs> or something, but where do you see yourself in the next five years? Um, in the next five years, I'm working really hard at boxing. I would hope to be fighting for um, a world title probably in the next three, if I can get all my stuff together. Um, I would love to try my hand at acting, but I'm a bit shy, so I got to work on that. But um, I-, I would say boxing will take off for me, and then I really just want to um, work on my nonprofit and um, help like kids out like me like that grew up how I did without not much um, support. But and able to like let them know that there's better options than doing just like thinking that where you're at is where you're stuck at. That that stuff as I'm getting a bit older is a lot more important to me. Um, but I wouldn't mind. I'm trying to get into modeling a little bit. I think my hair helps out a little bit. I got good curls, so I'm I'm trying to utilize that. We know some people. We'll make we'll make we'll, we'll have our friend Jasmine make some calls. Maybe maybe we'll get you in New York Fashion Week. See you at the Met Gala next year. You know it could happen. That would be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Well, we'll get you out on a high note. What's the best piece of advice that you give for success? Probably the one everyone hears all the time. Uh, just keep moving forward. Um, you're going to stumble. You're going to have a lot of highs. You're going to have a lot more lows, more than likely. And if you allow those. The same way you treat the highs, you got to treat the lows. The the same way you embrace the highs and you're all excited about how something worked out for you, you got to do the same thing with the with the lows. And you got to make sure that you push forward no matter what. You if you can learn from what you did wrong and the mistake you made, you're that much you're you're gonna build and you're gonna build. And even if it's brick by brick, like um like they say, Rome wasn't built in a day. Um, take what you can and what you will and just continue to build and push forward and don't let anybody tell you you're dreaming too big because that's just stupid like you can't dream too big you literally just go for it and even if you don't like reach it like you get pretty damn close which is good enough and then you continue to build that's i've had lows all the time i still do sometimes i i use it i try to learn from it and i get right back to it because i know this is exactly where i want to be and where i should be And I just keep pushing forward. And that's a very real thing. Why should fans check out your fight August 20th at Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City? I'm training every day, about 115 degrees, um, (laughs) busting my butt. So I I, I plan to uh, make it a show. It should be a uh, it's it's supposed to be a four round fight. And I I don't think it will be a four round fight. I, I think it will be much shorter than that. I'm, I'm busting my butt. And I, if uh, any, if you know anything about me, I work hard and and that will showcase itself on August 20th. Hey, as the old saying goes, don't blink, right? Don't blink. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, awesome. Well, Paul, thank you so much for the time. Where can we find you online? You can find me online at trifectastrong.com or on Instagram at Bomba Juice. And that's pretty much it. <laughs>